In this episode, an intern at a Big Cat Wildlife Park gets more than she bargains for when she enters the lion's enclosure. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying lion attack on Diana Hansen. Welcome to Final Affliction. Diana Hansen was fascinated by lions, tigers, cheetahs, and leopards. She had the privilege of getting up close and personal with them during visits to wildlife parks. Her Facebook page was littered with photos of her next to these incredible animals. Big cats were her passion. Since Diana was three years old, she had loved big cats. Now, just over 20 years later, she landed her dream job working as an intern at a big cat sanctuary in California. She was learning the ropes, learning what it took to keep some of the world's most magnificent predators in captivity. Her ultimate goal was to work in a zoo one day. Securing this internship was one step closer to that goal. She had spent time with captive tigers and lions during her studies at Western Washington State University and had visited Africa to see lions in the wild. Now, she was working at Cat Haven in Dunlap, California. The reserve was run by Project Survival, a privately funded education and conservation organization. The reserve covered an area of 100 acres and was home to tigers, leopards, lynxes, and other endangered big cats. The park was used for educational purposes to advertise the importance of these species as populations of their wild counterparts dwindle. As well as day visitors to the park, they also offered outreach programs, during which staff would visit schools and places of work with the big cats to educate and inspire people. 24-year-old Diana was instantly likable amongst the staff. She had an infectious enthusiasm about her work and was devoted to the big cats. She would make up songs about each of the animals she worked with, she loved being at the reserve and working with the animals so much that she requested that she could bring her parents to work to give them a tour. The staff accepted, and a few days later, Diana eagerly showed her parents around the reserve. They visited the tigers and then the lion enclosure. Inside was a male African lion named Couscous. He was four years old and weighed 500 pounds, 220 kilograms. He was handsome and striking a favorite amongst visitors to Cat Haven, a favorite of Diana's. Diana's father knew the dangers his daughter was facing each day she worked at the park. He knew the stories of captive animals turning on their keepers, and he had a feeling that it may someday happen to Diana. It was almost a premonition. He imagined the phone call he might receive, the devastating news waiting for him on the other end of the line. But Diana was happy she enjoyed her work. She had been working there for two months. She followed the safety protocols and knew the safety procedures when working with the big cats. On the morning of March 6, 2013, Dale Anderson, the owner of the park, left with two other workers for an outreach program. He was taking a cheetah to show children at a local zoo. It was a standard procedure. The staff that remained at the park, including Diana, continued with their jobs. Meg Pauls, an employee at Cat Haven, worked with Diana. The two took their usual route around the park, each of them assigned to a different section. They had a golf buggy to move around the park. With them, they carried food for the animals and equipment to clean the enclosures. As Meg went one way, Diana went the other. They would then meet at the end of their route and ride back to the staff room in their golf buggies together. This particular day was different, however. Diana's boyfriend was visiting from Italy. Diana had invited him to come and spend the day with her at Cat Haven. Maybe she wanted to prove herself to him. Maybe she wanted to show him just how majestic these animals were, or how good she was at her job. Nobody knows for sure why she did what she did. That morning, Couscous had already been fed. Just after midday, Diana entered the lion enclosure. She knew that she wasn't supposed to go in alone. Usually, two or three staff members are on site when somebody enters the pens. And as for Couscous, only Dale was ever allowed into his cage. But Diana knew where the key was. 
She also knew how to shut the lion in the small section of his enclosure while she cleaned the larger area. The section she locked him up in was the feeding section. He had already been in there once that day. There were four sections to the enclosure, one for a person and three for the lion. Each was securely fastened. There had never been any incidents or malfunctions on the gates or enclosures since the park was founded in 1993. The system seemed to work well, and all staff were adequately trained before working with the animals. Diana was sweeping the floor and scooping up the manure. She was emptying it into a large wheelbarrow when her walkie-talkie crackled into life. It was Meg. The two chatted together over the radios as Diana took a break from her chores, but her back was turned to Couscous. She was completely oblivious to the fact that she'd failed to close the gate partitioning the two sections. She had also failed to notice Couscous watching her with intriguing eyes. He nosed the gate and reached up with his paw. To his surprise, the gate moved. He nudged it again, and the gate swung open. He was now just feet away from the enthusiastic worker, and he stepped forwards. He was excited, curious. He sniffed the air as he placed one of his huge paws into the section of the enclosure that Diana was in. Slowly, he placed one foot in front of the other. To him, this was just a game. Living a life of solitude, he wasn't used to sharing his pen with anyone. He had been raised at the park since he was eight weeks old, just an energetic bundle of fur. But now he stood tall, an impressive mane and powerful body. He leapt at Diana, swiping her head with his paw. Diana crashed to the ground. In that instant, she was dead. The hit from the lion's paw had snapped her neck. She hadn't seen the attack coming. She hadn't felt any pain or suffering. One second she was talking on the radio, and the next, she was gone. Meg, on the other end of the radio, called for Diana. She thought it was suspicious for the conversation to suddenly drop, but continued working. She had finished her section of the park, and now she waited for Diana, but there was no sign of the intern or of her golf buggy. Meg drove around to the lion enclosure where she noticed Diana's golf buggy parked beside. She immediately spotted Diana lying on the floor of the enclosure, just beside a bush. She thought she must have fainted and called out to her. There was no response. Then her heart leapt in her chest as she noticed Couscous out of his small pen. There was nothing between the enormous lion and Diana. Calmly, Meg tried to talk to Couscous. She tried to keep him away from Diana's body whilst she hurriedly called 911. Emergency services arrived on the scene. Police officers tried to lure Couscous away into another enclosure with food so that the staff could reach Diana's body, but they were unsuccessful. The lion began acting aggressively and defensive over Diana's body. It growled and made lunges towards the emergency responders. Although Diana was unresponsive, they still needed to get the lion away from her if they were to have any chance of reviving her. At that time, they didn't know she was dead. They didn't know what had happened. Less than 30 minutes after Diana entered the lion enclosure, not only was she dead, but Couscous was shot dead by the Fresno County Sheriff's Office. It was now time for the sheriff to make that call to Diana's father, the call he had long been predicting the call he had been dreading. The family were distraught. They were heartbroken at losing Diana so young. Their only comfort was that she died doing what she loved. Her father acknowledged that she likely died instantly, possibly without even seeing the attack coming. It was not a long, drawn-out attack. She did not suffer, and that provided some comfort for them. There is very little information about why exactly Diana went inside the cage that day. Her boyfriend has never come out with any information confirming if he saw what happened, or if he was with her during the attack. Investigators concluded that the connecting door between the two sections of the enclosure had not been securely fastened. They walked Diana's father through the most likely scenario. It seems that she was distracted at one crucial point and failed to securely fasten the gate. It also seemed that Couscous leapt on her in a playful way, 
but his strength had broken her neck in an instant. There were no markings to suggest a mauling had taken place, no scratches on her body, just a broken neck. He hadn't even bitten her neck, but it had been broken, apparently, from just one swipe of his paw, a swipe that, in the wild, can be used to take down an antelope, knocking it off its feet. Although he was raised in captivity, Cusco still had the raw power of any lion, a deadly raw power that led to Diana Hansen's unfortunate final affliction.